Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomex. This time I will show you how to use mask sections added in the current stable version. I will show you two examples, one with point, remote mask and one with distributed mask. So let's create a new model first with the default settings and now I will import the geometry. And you will see that the geometry in this case is just a bar and from one of the previous tutorials, but in this case it's partitioned so that we can generate a nice hex mesh. Uh, so let's uh, create a compound part, part first. And then uh, I will be able to apply a transfinite mesh algorithm in order to get the hexahedral mesh here. So uh, first of all, let's uh, define meshing parameters. And uh, for that, I will specify uh, the maximum element size of 15 millimeters. And I will leave the rest with the default settings. And then uh, I will also create a transfinite mesh uh, object and assign it to the part. I just need to make sure that recombine is set to yes and then I can confirm and create the mesh. As you can see the mesh is created, we have a really nice uh, structured pattern of, of the hexahedral mesh. You can also check the type of elements used in this mesh and then um, we can proceed to the analysis setup. So uh, let's define uh, the model settings first, I mean let's create a material. Uh, apart from the apart from the usual uh, elastic properties, we will also need uh, density. Uh, you will see why we need that when we proceed to the analysis setup. So for now, let's just define the density uh, using proper units. And then uh, when we are done with the material definition, I can create a section. So this will be solid section. I can assign it to the whole uh, part and set the right material. For now, let's leave the sections. We will get back to them later. Uh, but uh, this is all we need um, at this point. And then uh, for the first example, I will show you how to use uh, the point mass feature and uh, to basically define a remote mass that you may know from some other software. Uh, so let's create the reference point first and uh, I will specify the coordinates of this reference point. Uh, so then um, I will be able to uh, create a rigid body constraint uh, linking this reference point with the face of the model. So let's create a rigid body constraint now. Uh, of course, referencing this uh, this point here, and then uh, I will select uh, the faces that I have here uh, to create a rigid body uh, constraint definition. And then, once the rigid body is created, I can uh, proceed to the rest of the setup. And uh, maybe before creating a step, I will go back to sections, and now I will need to add one more section because both point mass and distributed mass features are available under sections. So let's create point mass first. Uh, this one is pretty self-explanatory. It will just uh, add a mass to the, this, to the selected node. In this case, it will be a reference point. So let's uh, add, select this one. Uh, and the value of the mass uh, is uh, exactly uh, this. And this is just to achieve, uh, to, to achieve a proper uh, force from, from this mass. So this is automatically converted to the correct units and then I can confirm it. Uh, but this is not the, the only thing that I need to do to take it into account uh, during the analysis. So uh, let's create a step first. This will be static step with the default settings. So I will confirm this. Uh, I can maybe only change the solver to Pardiso to make it uh, solve faster. And then uh, I just need to define some boundary conditions, of course. So I will just fix and this end of the beam, this will be a cantilever uh, beam example. So let's uh, fix this end and then uh, I just need to define um, the loads. Uh, for this, I will need to create uh, two gravity loads and that's because one will be for the bar itself. So this is something that we also did in, in the previous tutorials. So let's define this one first. And then I also need the value of the uh, gravity acceleration uh, using the model units. So this is the, um, uh, the first one. And then the other one will also be in gravity load, but it has to be applied separately to the mass section in order to, to take into account the, the mass here. So uh, you need two definitions of, of, the, uh, of the gravity load. And then of course the same uh, value right here. And uh, so uh, I will confirm it. And now you can see that we have gravity load for both the bar itself and for the, um, for the mass. Of course, I don't have to apply it to the bar itself. I can only apply it to the mass to, to make it act as remote mass. But um, in this case, I also want to account for the weight of the bar itself. So um, this is uh, basically ready now. 
and I can submit the analysis and check the results from, from this first example. So let's do it now. The results are available now, so let's open them. And now uh, I need to check the results. As always, I will compare them with the analytical solution. So let's open the right uh, document in CalcPad. And uh, here, uh, of course, I have the uh, mass uh, calculated, the one that I defined in Prepomex. And then I also have the other values uh, for this model. And finally, the stress that I want to uh, calculate here. And I will compare it with the stresses that I got from, from the analysis. So let's uh, switch to uh, misses because you can see that we have uh, misses stress calculated here. So we can uh, use the query tool and check some nodes, uh, maybe not necessarily right where the fixed constraint is, but we can look at the value again and uh, check where the, um, where the stresses reach this value. As you can see, we are really, uh, really close uh, to the uh, value from from the from the calculated sheet. So um, we can say that uh, here we have correct results from from this analysis, but uh, it won't be the only one in, in this tutorial, because I also want to show you another example. And uh, for this one, let me leave this uh, this model because it will be the same geometry, same mesh and material. I will only modify uh, the analysis settings and uh, this uh, mass section. So let me uh, delete this step here and then I will just uh, also remove uh, the rigid body constraint and finally also the reference point because I don't need them anymore and also the point mass uh, section. So we are only left with what we had um, initially. And then uh, let me just define another mass section. This time it will be the distributed mass section of course, it means that you can basically apply uh, some mass distributed on a surface. So you can uh, select a surface here and uh, this will be turned into proper uh, mass definitions um, so that you can uh, have it uh, properly uh, uniformly uh, assigned to a surface. So um, let me specify the value. In this case, it will be much lower, just 10 kilograms. And then uh, let me confirm. So I have the distributed mass here and this time uh, I will be running a frequency step. So this is a dynamic step here. I just need to specify the number of frequencies and I can only do the rest with the default settings. Uh, I also need to recreate the boundary condition that I had. So this will be the one here. And finally, uh, I don't need any loads here. So basically uh, I can maybe also select the uh, Pardiso solver, uh, just in case. So basically, that's the the uh, whole setup that I need here. And in the case of dynamic analysis, uh, like frequency, you don't need to uh, take the, the mass section separately into account, and uh, they will be taken into account automatically. So you don't need any special definitions apart from just creating the section. This is only the case in static analysis where you need to create a separate gravity load for them. So I can submit this analysis now, and let's wait for the results. Let's open the results. And now uh, I will compare them with the uh, analytical solution again. So let me open the other uh, CalcPath sheet. And here I have the um, first natural frequency calculated according to the formula from the Plevins book. Uh, and we can compare it directly with the results from uh, Prepomex, which is uh, quite close uh, to uh, what was predicted analytically. Of course, of course, we could also play with other uh, values here, change the, the mass uh, and then uh, look for this is the, the applied mass here. And then we could uh, also try with other values to, to see how the frequency changes. Uh, but in this case, this is the, the result that we wanted to um, obtain. So uh, we are also uh, quite close to the uh, result of the hand calculations. Uh, basically, that's it for this Prepomex tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and as always, feel free to ask any questions and su suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.